Hey you folks, Quillateen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play European Universalis 4 as Sweden, where we have grown very big and are totally, totally backwards on technology and have no manpower and no stability, so we're pretty much asking for a peasant war, uh, which would be double plus on good. For reference, a peasant war can trigger whenever you're below one quarter of your total manpower and you're overextended or your legitimacy is low or any of those things. Now, we're about to not be overextended, which will be nice. Um, your stability does affect the chance of getting a peasant's war. Basically, um, for every point of positive stability, it's sort of 10% less likely, and for every point of negative stability, it's some more likely, or it'll happen faster. It affects the, uh, the mean time to trigger stuff. So, basically, you, uh, you don't want to be in this situation here. But, we should hopefully pull out of it, because we have high legitimacy. Uh, as soon as we're not overextended anymore, which should happen now, nope, very soon, um, then I think there'll be no ability to uh, trigger a Peasant's War, which will be nice. But other than that, we're mostly just going to be sitting idle for a little while. We're going to try to tech up a bit. Uh, oh, that's right. I uh, I'd started something and I realized I don't want to do it. I'm going to cancel the annexation of Scotland. We haven't actually put any effort into it at all yet, just because it's going to take so long to do. Um, Over here. We're going to pull back on that. Uh, instead, what we'll probably do is just eat Tyrone in, like, whenever it becomes available. Um, not not that one. Annex. So, 10 years. Does, it tells me somewhere. There we go. So, in 51, we'll be able to annex him. And it'll happen very, very, very quickly. Um, and that'll be fine. And what we'll do is we'll revisit the Scottish situation later on when we have um, better... Um, better diplomatic reputation, which A, will happen if we're not overextended, although, uh, so what'll happen is if we get a plus one in diplomatic reputation, then that'll give us a plus one to our annexation rate, so we'll literally, assuming I'm thinking of this correctly, we'll be spending twice as much, we'll be annexing twice as fast, or, or quite a bit faster anyway, um, and then if we can get even more positive diplomatic reputation, for example, if we end up going diplomatic ideas, which is actually a, probably a pretty good idea for our setup. A trade is also nice, um, and definitely a possibility. Trade would be pretty sexy, but if we get diplomatic ideas, it'll go a long way towards helping us annex people. And I think that um, vassalizing people is going to be a pretty common thing for us over here. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, we are no longer overextended at all, which is beautiful. Our manpower is almost at 25% of our max, which is another way to prevent the Peasants' War. Overall, we're sitting pretty tight, uh, mostly just looking to tech up. What do we have focus? We have no focus set right now, and I think that's good. We do have an extra military leader who I will... He's not bad, but I'll go ahead and bop him off just to be able to save the extra point over there. Meanwhile, let's check our income. What's our maintenance rate set to? Low, not literally zero, because I don't like to do that, because it then doesn't reinforce at all. Although I could probably afford to drop it a bit more. We're going to check on that. How's our fleet? We could technically build four more ships, and I think I will do that. And I'm going to build light ships, because light ships are awesome, because of trade. They can also fight a fairly decent way. Uh, we might end up going maritime ideas at some point, just to have our light ships be able to fight better. We'll see how it goes. So what I'm considering, since we're so far behind on military attack, well, we're not so far behind, but we are. And since we're making money, it might be worth going up to some plus two dudes. Although I like the 10% manpower modifier. Uh, I might keep the 10% for now. Um, we made a claim, so we got some points. All right, we got a CB against Poland, which we may or may not use right away. Recover from negative stability would be nice. You know, five free prestige ain't bad. I mean, it decays. It's about a year's worth of prestige. Uh, Swedish Pomerania will work on it. Let me go ahead and recover from negative prestige as our first thing, because I actually quite like to be in positive prestige, especially it only costs us 70 points, and it pretty dramatically improves our, um, I could take this for an even bigger discount, but I don't think I'm going to do that. It pretty dramatically improves our tax income and all kinds of other jazz, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then we get a new idea. Improve defenses in Holstein. Um, or we could claim a province. Ooh, that's tough, because I, army tradition is, at peacetime is basically impossible to get. It's really nice to have high army tradition for better leaders. That being said, I'll go ahead and take the, um, the, uh, the mission that gives me military points. So, Oost, where is that? Is that Russian? Oost, which means east, right? There, right over here. So we're going to put a claim on Russia, and of course, Russia did actually form... There we are. 
which is going to help them out a little bit, but not that much. And yes, at some point, we're going to have to pick up the Olenets. A war with Russia is definitely in the cards. They only have tech level 9. We're actually ahead of them militaristically. If we can pop 11, which will give us... Um, it's not critical, actually. Are we going to take a diplomatic idea? I think we are. Or not, well, we're going to take a diplomatic idea. But we don't get our next idea until admin level 14. So we're going to be spending diplo points. So we may as well go ahead and uh, level this guy up. It's already a 20% discount. Just on the off chance it doesn't get any deeper on January. No, it wouldn't. It would get deeper if other people were even further ahead of us. So we'll go ahead and take that. We don't care about any of these modifiers. Although, um, Carracks and Caravels are nice. So how do we upgrade our fleets? Because I know that's a thing we can do. So right here, 150 bucks. We'll upgrade our, um, our Carracks. No, we have Carracks. Do we still have... Oh, we have some early Carracks. So now, 150 bucks. we'll upgrade these early Carracks to Carrick Carracks. Uh, I think that's probably okay. What would be even better would be upgrading my actual trade fleet. Although I suspect that that's even more expensive. Let me go ahead and just upgrade these three, um, these three Carracks for now. That'll be a fine way of doing it, and we'll upgrade the rest of them later on. The next level is particularly nice. 10% trade efficiency is really good. Also, the settler increase if we were doing colonization. And if you are playing Scotland, or sorry, if you're playing Sweden, and own Scotland especially, uh, if you're playing Sweden, you probably want to take colonization ideas, especially if you go ahead and like integrate uh, Norway and pick up Iceland over here. It gives you such phenomenal uh, colonial range. You probably want to do that. But again, we I'm not doing it this game because reasons because i've done too many colonial trade kind of games and i want to mix it up we get a grand captain which is probably a morale of the navy leader yeah right over here those events that like give you an extra leader i suppose technically sometimes they might be handy but it doesn't come up too often so just out of curiosity how much would it cost me 422 to upgrade all my ships um Okay, which is actually not too bad. We'll definitely want to do it. Making pretty decent income right now. Actually, it'll go up a, again in a tick as soon as my trade starts to work again. Um, I've been discussing moving my trade capital, which I haven't done yet. Sampling new religions. More unrest, lowered taxes, lowered manpower. Or increase narrow minded. Stronger missionary strength, but increased techno cost for 10 years. Mmm... We don't really need the increased military strength, or, um, uh, missionary strength, and the increased technical cost would be pretty bad. So it's just one province. One province with a little bit more unrest and things. We'll go ahead and accept that. That's life. We're about to flip our last Protestant nation over. Um, and yeah, actually, maybe that's what I should have done with my Diplo points, is just moved my trade capital to, or my trade port to, uh, um, Copenhagen here. Or I could just move my capital. And I'm tempted to just move my capital. Now, when you form Scandinavia, I think it moves your, um, doesn't it move your capital? Someone told me it might move your capital, like, and that would be kind of annoying if I moved my capital and then eventually do form Scandinavia and it moves my capital somewhere else. So maybe we'll just move the, the trade port. We're, it's kind of annoying because we're actually, um, oh, we're no longer ahead of time administratively. So I was going to say, we were ahead of time uh, in, in administration, so if we want to do anything, we might want to dump some admin points. Um... And so it would be okay to spend the admin points because we actually want to tech up diplomatically a little bit. It's not really the end of the world, but um, no, that's going to be fine. We actually do want admin points because, A, you always want to be ahead of time in admin if you can pull it off because the extra production efficiency is glorious. Uh, the extra trade efficiency is pretty good, too. But, um, yeah, I'll just move my trading port over to Copenhagen. I mean, it technically has the sound toll and everything, so it, like, thematically makes a lot of sense. Ah. Stupid stability events. And yeah, I really like to have at least neutral stability. But I like to go up to plus one, because the plus one is still really cheap. You can see it's 70 power right now for us to go to plus one, which is pretty good. After that, it gets more expensive. Parliament of Vosteros? Uh, I don't know. Uh, something Swedish Liberation War, Crown Enormous Debt to the Hanseatic Lead. I don't think I've got any debt whatsoever, actually. Oh, uh, we have a loan apparently, which I could pay off right away. Um, Parliament took first steps towards Protestantism. Well, we're pretty Catholic. Holy crap! W holy crap! What an event! Okay, so 
we could flip our country's religion to Protestant, which would cost us three stability. It would give us a bunch of money, not to mention unrest, but we get money and our tax modifiers would be up for, it's only five years. Um, the problem with this is we literally only have one Protestant province and we're currently converting that over. So yeah, historically, Sweden did become Protestant. But this time, I'm pretty sure we're going to become, we're going to stick with Catholic. Uh, especially because a lot of German nations are going to go Protestant and uh, France is Catholic. And so we might buddy-buddy up there and that sort of thing. But in particular, I love the plus three stability. I mean, I think this is the only thing that makes sense. Um, I'll have to play a game of Sweden at some point where I like specifically target becoming Protestant you know much more proper i guess if i had switched my religion to protestant earlier on when there were still centers of reformation i could have i could have flipped protestant from this event gotten a center of reformation for protestant and which would have auto converted a lot of uh, uh, provinces which might have been fun but here we're going to remain true to catholic we're going to gain all the way up to plus three stability which is damn sexy the pope's going to like us a little bit more which is handy we made a claim over there we'll recall our diplomat with france we could pick a new idea um, yeah, I'm going to finish my uh, my offensive ideas at this point. The 5% discipline is pretty nice. We're going to unlock Forest March. And it will, again, give me a slight discount on my military tech so we can keep working on it. I'm behind the times here, but I'm keeping pace with our neighbor. Russia is still one level behind me, so that's nice. Um, Swedish Pomerania, yeah, eventually. We definitely want to take control over the entire Baltic. That will definitely be a plan. But for now, I think improving defenses in Holstein is nice. Holstein's kind of on the front, so actually having a higher um, fort level here is not a bad thing. And we're basically uh, spending a little bit of money and a tiny bit of military power to get some extra um, army tradition, which is good, actually. So right now we're making almost 20 per turn. Got that. Trade situation. Well, I have about 50% of the trade in the Baltic Sea. Um, I'm not really going to build much in the way of uh, trade buildings in these provinces because I should at some point control 100% of the land. And then other than, you know, enemy ships buzzing around in here, that'll give us 100% of the trade power. Um, but it's going to be a long, long time before we have full control over the, the Lubeck trade node. Although I might be wrong, I didn't realize this is a Saxony trade node over here. The Lubeck trade node only requires that we grab a handful of provinces here that we don't have access to. That's interesting. So again, I may not build any trade buildings over here. Um, we'll see how it goes. Do I have a dock set up in uh, Skana over here? No, and I think I should because that seems like the natural place for me to dock my ships. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that just for the increased ship repair time because I think it's going to be handy. And ultimately, we'll probably want to go down the naval branch quite a bit, just so that we can uh, get the shipyards with the plus one force limit. And there's another one. Yeah, the naval arsenal gives you even more uh, force limit and even more from the naval base. So in all in all, we can build enough buildings to get an extra five force limit. Uh, Hansa, Hansa, no claim. Oh, I missed my window. Oh, hang on. Lock. Is it locked? No. Now it's locked. What's the coalition map mode look like? Hmm. I missed my window of declaring war on England without them having joined a coalition. Just out of curiosity, if I were to declare war right now, Cologne would be forced to jump in because they're in a coalition that automatically co belligerizes them. That's interesting. I think if... Yeah. Oh, huh, that is interesting. France, Lithuania. So Russia and Bohemia would jump in. That's a really, really good question. First of all, what additional allies does England have? Poland. Or does Russia have? Because I'm just looking for where to declare war. So I don't think I would want to co belligerize Russia. Um, although, fighting, we've got a truce. Now, they could, do, they could ignore the truce if they get called in defensively. Lithuania really likes me. France likes me enough to jump in, which will be good. And the fact that Cologne is in will give France the ability to walk through um, the HRE territory. And us as well. Cologne and Bohemia. Bohemia will probably jump in. I'm going to assume that we don't want to cobaladrize Bohemia. No. Plus, I think if we did that, it would technically give um, Austria the ability to jump in to defend um, the HRE. Well, if we were to declare war on England, we'd have to have some troops over there first. 
So maybe we'll get to work on that. Um, interesting that this fleet is not mothballed. Let's go ahead to uh, Finland over here and pick up some troops. But yeah, it would have been nice to get them maybe before the coalition. It might not matter. The only difference between declaring war now and before they entered the coalition is whether Cologne jumps in. Um, it would be nice for us to take a bunch of Cologne. I'm worried that France will most might just separate peace out and take some of their stuff. But maybe not. And frankly, it'll just generate a lot of war score because France will be able to crush their military. The Holy War CV, we need 80% battle win. And France will easily be able to take that. And then the only question is whether Lithuania will lose a bunch of battles to uh, Russia. So let's move you to there. Let's take a look at Russia's force limits here. Armies. So first Lithuania. It's 27,000 men, 36 manpower. That's not that much. Russia will be much bigger than that. No, only 29,000. Really? Lithuania, you're tech 9. Russia's tech 9. Russia does have seven defensive ideas, which means they'll have higher morale. Also, by having full defensive, we will get attrition in their territory. Lithuania, come on, has full humanist ideas and some aristocratic stuff. Hmm. It's not so bad. France can technically reach my territory and everything. Oh, and France still has their army over here. Listen, France, someone said maybe if I give you... If I... Oh, you don't want fleet basing rights. I'm going to offer you military access, which of course you will take. I mean, it's not going to take an extra relationship slot because we're already allied. Just don't know if that'll make a difference here. Maybe once the war starts, it will actually help. I don't know. Anywho, we'll move our troops over. And we'll get in position. Scotland's got some troops over here. Actually, here's something I didn't check. What are England's actual uh, troop counts? They can't be that high. They don't have that much territory. There's this English West Indies. 32,000. And their tech level is 11. And Scotland's is 11 as well. We'll repay that loan. That army over here, which will move down to the coast to help our um, transport fleet. Where's the trans Is this our transport fleet? Yeah. So we'll move the second load of troops. That's fine. Um, maybe we'll move our ships in to do a blockade. I don't think the English have much of a navy. Well, 41, including nine heavies. That's actually a pretty big navy. Because I think we did sink a big number of their navy last time. I might be remembering wrong, though. All right, a little bit of casualties. Let's go ahead and start bringing up the... Uh, the maintenance slider. Let's bring our fleet together. We might be able to catch some of the English fleet out and then destroy it. Uh, we'll probably want to make sure we have an admiral. Not bad, not bad. No, ma no maneuver? No maneuver. And maneuver is pretty important in naval battles. I mean, it's become pretty important in land battles now, too. Um... But it's even more important than naval battles. Because it brings your ships to actually attack. France, you're not at war with anyone? No. Good. England is at war with someone. Milan, sir. Who's this? Defender against Milan in the Milanese conquest of Mantua. So they got pulled into something by an ally. Russia's not at war with anyone. Which is too bad. That would be nice. But this will prove to be a nice distraction. I don't know if they even have any troops in their mainland. Now, Leinster is, of course, my um, my vassal. Which means they'll probably just go and grab Moonster. Alright, we'll wait for our stuff to tick up. And we will keep an eye out for any English navy whatsoever. There's like a ship buzzing around here. I suspect most of them are out blockading somewhere. So we're not going to be able to defend ourselves from Russia right away. Uh, but we'll get a full siege on England, who's going to be the, the specific war target leader guy. Um, let's go to full maintenance. So that's still... Oh! No, that's just one. Some French troops there. I just saw the bigger number and I got excited. Okay. 
Well. We'll wait another month. Actually, we might put in a cut and actually start the war next episode. It'll also give me another chance to double check everything between episodes to make sure we're not making a horrible, horrible mistake. We finished our star fort, which means our mission completed. Excellent. I don't suppose we got a new mission that's handy. Construct a grand fleet. Heavies. Wow, 20 heavies. Crush England! I like it. Let's take that mission. I'll give us five prestige as soon as we go to war with them. Um... Which I think might happen right now. And by right now, I mean next time. Thank you for watching, folks. Bye-bye.